Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box. Most have links, so check that out. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified of new videos, hit that notification bell. Okay, I've been trying all morning to do a balloon, but I keep liking what I do and I end up not wanting to do it. So I'm really going to try hard to do some balloon smashes on here. I'm going to do four smaller ring pours. I'm thinking flip cups, but no, 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 I've changed my mind. Uh, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to just put some colors in here. This is Payne's Gray. And I'm just squirting. I'm not being real peculiar about it. Other than trying to put some light colors with dark colors. Uh, da, 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 da. Do I do white? I'm about out of that. And let's see, let's do red. And I'm just doing, I am just colors I like. I'm not even trying to coordinate. I hate it when they get those little blobs in there. Uh, I'll be mixing some more white up here. There's none in here where I look. Oh, there's a little bit. And let's do some green. Looks like somebody needs to mix up more color. I'm going to try to get by without mixing up white, but I will stop if I need to. Yeah, I'm going to need to. Okay, I'll be right back. My mixture on my paint is you're halving each of the volume. So, for instance, this gets 80 grams of glue or Floetrol. 40 grams of paint and 20 to 30 depending on your thickness. I start out at half, half, and half, so it would be 80, 40, 20. And then for certain things, I will put more water in it. Let's do something here like that. I'm not sure really why I wanted to do four. I guess I like four better than three. I have no idea. I got plenty of white in those, I think. Oh, let's put some more dark. Just to add something. Something, something. Mm 
Okay. All right, so here I go. I'm just going to start pouring a ring. It looks like my hand is a foot above the canvas. It is not. So I have started doing a bigger circle and just kind of flowing in. Um, <laughs> I wasn't getting any other color in blue in that one, so I tried to move it a little bit. Um, but I do. I start out a little wide and work my way in and keep pouring from there. And then I pretty much do all four cups the same. Each of them is going to have a little different color pattern, which uh, I think really makes a painting look neat. So I'm going to go ahead and finish pouring all these up. And when I get done, I usually put the cups somewhere on the canvas and what little paint comes out of there may or may not help, but at least we're not, you know, just leaving it in the cup. So sometimes there's enough paint that comes out um, that we can use. These obviously not. Um, what I like to do if I've got a lot of canvas left after I do something like this is I like to pour um, either the white or black or some used paint. Um, sometimes if I have a lot of paint left over, I'll just put it in a uh, little drink bottle and I call that my scoot paint. And it just helps the pattern scoot rather than just roll under and disappear. So that's what I'm trying to do with this white here. And I'm going to speed this up because all I'm doing is spreading it out. Okay, and this is always the fun part is watching what it does.
Okay, I think that will work. That'll give me something to play with. It's not so broken up. It's got some bold colors and some solid colors in it. So this is going to be good. Now I've got my balloon. I didn't blow it up tons because I didn't. I don't. I, I don't know. I just didn't. So <laughs> I pressed it down on the first spot, and that's when I realized I need to put paint on it. So I'll try it again. You know, same result. Um, so at this point, I get a little plate, and not evidently not at this point. At the maybe next point, nope, not that point either. Oh, uh, I'll learn. I'll eventually figure it out. Oh, I figured it out. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to get like a little plate or tray or something, and I'm going to start pouring these colors that I've already used in them, and I want to make kind of... Um, the the uh, sea foam or the red put those two together and then i want to do the blues and whites and the little sea foam together so i'm gonna put those in a container and then i think it'll work better i'm almost sure it'll work better any minute now this is the problem with voiceovers I know what happens I want to tell you what happens but yet I need to stay with the program now I will be very honest that first one I did was the best I love it more than anything it is the coolest looking thing so um, I've, I've learned to put the colors on this yeah I've not done this before if you hadn't figured that out but I've seen it done, but I didn't know the particulars. I didn't know all the little details I needed to do. So what I've learned is you need to reapply that paint to your plate or tray every two or three dips because you're messing it up that much. So dip it maybe three times and then re-put a pattern on there. They're going to come out so much crisper. You can see the three that I've got that I that I did the second third and fourth one that first one came out great and crisp and pretty so see see the tray so I'll get two or three out of that and you got to wipe it off in between so there's a lot of paint going on paper towels right here so definitely what I have learned is dip it in your paint tray put it on your painting wipe it off repeat so that seems to be the ticket. And then I keep having to, right on top of the paint in the tray, I just put some more fresh colors, you know, just make a design or something out of them because they do start getting mixed very quickly with just dipping the balloon in it a couple of times. So here I am reapplying right on top of the other because it's just picking up the very top. And the other half of that tray, I've got the darker blues.
And here's where I start putting some of the darker blues and the light blues together. I don't think there's any red in this one. And now I'm just trying to make it have a little bit of a pattern or just doing what looks good, I guess. It's kind of funny. People have said either it looks like umbrellas on the beach or that candy like you get at some of the restaurants. <laughs> Either one, it's pretty fun. Okay, I have been stirring this for 30 minutes. This is 30 mLs part A, 30 mLs part B on the KS resin. Yes, it's bubbly, I don't worry about that because you're gonna take heat to it. And I have found it takes about 60 mLs to do uh, 16 by 20. And that's what this is, so. All right, we'll pour this around the outside. My goodness, my cats. Okay, I set that there, let it drain, it will. Um, I am going to run this over and heat this up a little bit, plus it pops some of the bubbles. Whoops, sorry, my head. start working this and it makes it easier to smooth when it gets a little warm I'm gonna start working this to these edges I will move this so don't worry about that plastic I am not I don't let it sit here this is just somewhere I can I'm by a window, but it's getting dark, so my window's not helping me. But I take them to a flat spot. I've got a couple of tables that are flatter. But that's what I... Let these sit. And 
that's pretty much the first thing I do is get these corners and then I can do the rest of it not corners edges and get the rest of it done So you really want to take your time and make sure you get every inch covered. You hate to wake up the next morning and realize you've missed a spot. So I'm just making sure everything's covered and then I'll take my embossing gun or heat gun. I like it generally a little bit better than a torch unless I'm just not near an outlet. And I go over it pretty thoroughly to make sure all those bubbles are popped. And I'll run that heat gun over it about two or three more times in about a 20 or 30 minute period and then we're done. So y'all go have fun.